everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today's editing video is about capturing and then editing the beauty of spring. So I absolutely love springtime and I've been out shooting and capturing lots of our spring blooming trees. Now this is an image that I literally just pulled off the side of the road for this huge old magnolia tree that was in bloom. Part of my um, inspiration for this set of images that I've been working on is an artist by the name of David Hockney. Some of you may be familiar with David's work. So David Hockney is a studio artist, and in the past few years, he's been creating incredible images using his iPad. And these are images where he is out in nature and creates a stunning images, especially of spring, using his iPad. And I got to see this exhibit a few years ago and absolutely fell in love with it. I've been wanting to use his work as inspiration for my own spring photographs. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit of David's work so that you can get an idea of the direction that I'm going. Now, David expresses spring with very vibrant, bright colors, bright blues, those chartreuse greens, and the way he creates these gorgeous trees is with a lot of dots. You can see the cherry blossoms with some dots, um, lots of lines, and he really illuminates his tree bark and branches. So I think they're just absolutely beautiful and really embrace the season and the essence of spring. You can see this is a dogwood, just really gorgeous and stunning. So while we can't imitate exactly unless we want to use some type of app or program, I just want to use my skills in Lightroom and Photoshop to convert my little tree image into something very similar. So to get started, the first things that I notice, the difference in his work and my photograph is the vibrancy of the colors. Now, I was shooting on a very gray, kind of boring day, which can happen sometimes in spring. You don't have a lot maybe of totally bright skies every day in early spring. So the first thing I want to do is impact the color tones in this image. So first, I want to start with a little bit regarding the temp and temperature. I'm going to make it a little bit more on that blue side. Second thing I wanted to do is come down to our colors in the color mixer or the HSL panel, depending on which version of Lightroom you're using. So first thing I want to do is really enhance the green. I'm going to just overly saturate it. I also want to come down to the hue. I hardly ever change the hue in an image, but I want to make it really, really green. So I'm going to just vibrance that up. Now I want to go back to the saturation and I also want to make our magenta pop since that's in our flower. Just bump that a little bit. I also want to bump the blues in the sky. All right, so we've got our colors. Okay, they're still not quite as vibrant as I want, but I feel sure that we will get there. I'm also going to go ahead and do a little bit of a brightness on the tone curve in the middle just to pop that just a little bit as we work. Now, I want to try to adapt the sky. I'm not sure if Lightroom will find a sky mask, but I'm going to give it a shot. So let's click the sky mask option and see if it can detect the sky for us. OK, it did a pretty good job. So what I want to do here is I want to reduce the whites a little bit. I'm going to come down and I do want to make the temp really blue and I want to saturate it but not over. You don't want to distort, especially the pink colors around the edges of our image. So I am going to be careful with that, not to mess up that edge. So let's go back to, um, we can also try the hue. Now we don't want it turquoise. We just kind of want it right there on that blue side. Now we could also do our point curve and that can also give us some more blue. So just raising that up. Now, what I notice with this mask, it is, Im, is impacting our flower. So I'm going to do a subtract color range. I'm going to select that pink and get it to subtract it from our um, mask. So that should take that mask off. Um, and I'm going to refine it and just get it to remove that. 
All right, so the next thing is I do think we need to brighten the stems of our tree. So I'm gonna create a new mask. We are going to try a color range again, and I want to select the brown, the brown stems. All right, so we've got some of that selected. I am going to refine it. Yeah, I wanna refine it this way to really just get those stems and not the color. All right, I think that will work. And now what I wanna do is open up the exposure. So I wanna brighten those just a little bit. I am going to darken them to make it really stand out. Give it a little contrast, but a little bit more exposure. So we're kind of darkening and brightening at the same time. We can also go back to our tone curve, add a little brightness there, but also darken those shadows a little bit. We can also add some more texture and even a little clarity to that area. So just want to make those stand out a little bit more than they were. Let's pop the exposure just a little bit more. All right, so if we see before and after, what an impact already we're making on this little tree image. Now I do want to share when I was out shooting, I had on a lens baby lens. Lens baby lens are very artistic and so it gave me all this blur around the edges. So just know that's why the image isn't super sharp as we um, as we work on it. All right, so we're getting closer to our inspiration, which is David Hockney. We're not there yet, but let's go ahead and keep working on it. I'm going to do one more mask here in Lightroom, color range. I want to pick this really light pink color. There we go. And I just want to pop the exposure to brighten it. All right. So next step, I'm going to go ahead and take this image straight into Photoshop. So a couple of ideas I have in Photoshop. There's a couple of edit, edits that I want to make, cleaning up the image a little bit. I want to add some more blossoms around the bottom. And then I do want to work on creating more of that um, pointillism look. So first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer. And I noticed this, one of these stems right here is just kind of, it's really bothering my eye. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the spot healing brush. And I'm just going to go really slow. And yeah, I just want to clean that one up just a little bit. That branch was just, just a little bit distracting to me. Also this branch, so I'm just gonna come down with it. It's right in the center of my image, and so I just wanna clean, clean that up. I think it also opens up that space. Now I chose to do that versus the remove because sometimes the remove tool, it works great, I think, when you have larger things, but I still like to use the spot heel tool for these kind of smaller adjustments. Okay, so if we look at this before, you can see those lines and after. I just think that it gives it, it's cleaned up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this layer. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the clone tool and I wanna actually use the option key to target some of these blooms. So let's just come in and target those. And I just wanna pop those around and kind of multiply them around the grass. And we've also got some areas where there's some um, blooms. So I just wanna multiply those. So I'm just gonna kind of go around and just blend in some more, um, some more blooms. Come around, especially like in this dark spot. Just gonna kind of go around with the grass and just multiply that a little bit. lead this one off in the edges, come around to where that's a little, got a little blob, yeah, and just continue to kind of enhance those. Now there is something out here, I'm gonna use my clone tool to fix that. Just kind of make that go off like that. Okay, so I think we're getting there. It's, it's getting more um, in line with what I'm wanting. Now up here at the top, I still feel a little bit of blue from the sky, so I'm just gonna use the clone tool 
I'm just going to come up and kind of enhance and make this tree just even a little bit bigger. Just around that area that had a little bit of a blob in it. Just a little bit there. And if you feel like you go too far, you can grab your eraser. And I'm just going to kind of um, erase that. I'm going to go back to the clone, grab my option key, and just kind of bring that in a little bit tricky area. So just kind of want to want to leave it right there. All right. So the next thing that I want to do, I'm going to do a stamped layer, command option shift and the letter E. And now I want to work on these petals and just really making them look more like an artistic um, painted image. So there's several tools that you could use here in Photoshop. So under filter, you have blur tools, you have stylized tools. I mean, there the options are just endless. You have the um, emboss tool, which I really like. You also have under Pixelate, there are several options. So under Pixelate, let's try a couple of these together. First, let's try Mosaic and see how it works on this tree. Now you can see that it's giving it those kind of square dots. But what you can do then is reduce the opacity and it will give you that artistic look. But I'm not sure that's the right one for this image. Let's go back to Pixelate. There's also Mosaic. There's Mesotint. And you can see that's doing fine dots or it will do medium dots. It will do medium strokes. So you can see all the different options, medium lines. I don't think we need lines in this image. However, it may look nice on the grass. So let's try short lines. Click OK and see what it does to our image. Now we can bring down the opacity and I do like what it did to the grass, but not the tree. So let's add a layer mask. We are going to do Command or Control I to invert that mask. And now I'm going to grab my brush and probably at close to 100% opacity, I am gonna brush on that fun, just kind of pop it in here in the grass area, that fun technique that we just added. So I think that brings, brings some whimsy to it. Okay, and then you can reduce the opacity. I'm gonna just reduce it down so it's just really, really subtle, but I like where it's headed. So now let's do another stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E. And now let's try some other things. Let's go back to Filter, Pixelate, and let's try the facet. And it didn't give us an option for that one. So let's go back to filter, pixelate, and let's try crystallize. All right, so here's crystallize. Now crystallize is a fun one. It's gonna give you those circular, um, elements. And I really like that and think that could work really nice for this tree. So let's keep it relatively low and click OK. Oh, wow. Look at that. Now that is definitely looking a lot more like our artist. And that is my inspiration for this image. So let me jump back over to Photoshop. Wow, now that is fun. I um, I like that one a lot. It definitely looks like um, a spring. Of course, it looks like a generated, you know, a computer digital art image. But what I'm going to do is just lower that opacity a little bit. Let's just bring it down. And I actually like how it's added these bits to the bottom. I think it's just really, really interesting and beautiful. It's really making our petals look more like our inspiration image. And I think it's really making it look like um, a spring day. So you could decide how much you like of that. Um, again, that was under filter, pixelate, and we were using the um, uh, crystalline option, I think. Let's go back and see exactly. Yes, crystallize. So that was crystallize. There's also mosaic, but I wanted to try crystallize. And um, I think it's a... Um, definitely an interesting option. I'm going to take it all the way up so you can see it. So you could leave it at 
maybe 80% if you wanted it to be more whimsical. I'm going to lower it maybe to about right there. Now, as I'm working on this, I have an idea that I want to try. So I'm going to go ahead and do another stamped layer, Command Option Shift in the letter E. I want to go to Edit, and I want to do a sky replacement. Just want to see if we can get some actual clouds in here, which will make it really, really whimsical and a lot brighter. So let's see if it will recognize it. All right, it's adding that in. I'm going to try a couple different skies. Let's do one with some different clouds. Oh, that's much happier and brighter. So I figure if we're going to really change this image up, we might as well go for it, right? All right, so that's our sky replacement. We've still got kind of this purple mountain over here, and I'm not sure that I particularly like that. So we've got our sky replacement group. I am going to go ahead and um, apply a mask, and we're going to need a black brush. Make the brush smaller. I'm going to see if I can remove. I don't want to remove it off the whole sky, so I'm going to flip it. Definitely want that edge, but I really don't like this purple area. So let's go ahead and do a stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E. And now what I'm going to do is let's just use the clone tool. And I am just going to try to clone this up so that it kind of just disappears. Yeah, just disappears a little bit. I'm going to make it disappear right there. And that's one option. It does kind of look funny now being right there. Um, let's see what it does to do. Um, let's make it smaller and just add some extra branches right there. That will kind of disguise it. That's better, and I am going to disguise that one right there. Okay, so that's fine. That doesn't bother me as much now. I just think that sky replacement, it just made such an impact. Let's look at it before, and let's look at it after. Now, it did darken our image just a little bit, so we can come down and do a curves adjustment. Let's get on a layer, come down, do a curves adjustment, and I am just going to brighten using the curves, the whole image a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. Now, I would like to alter our pink tones just a little bit, but we can come back and do that. And then a final step is we could try adding a stylized oil paint. So let's do a stamped layer and come up to filter, stylize oil paint. And I'm going to keep everything the same as I usually do. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to add a lot of whimsy, which kind of takes away from the other effect. So I am just going to bring it way down. And then I'm going to look at it before and after. I barely see any difference. Let's take it up to about 50%. I actually think it, it almost distracts from the fun element that we added. So I'm going to leave that one off for today. So you could continue to make some changes. Um, I think that I would. Let's make another stamped layer. And I do see this one area that looks a little bit weird. So I'm just going to grab my clone tool, click the option button, and come right over. Just kind of clean up around the bottom. I just think that looks like kind of like Easter candy. Um, all right, so at this point, I would take the image back into Lightroom and then I'd probably work on my colors one more time. I'd really like my pink colors, the darker pink, to really stand out and pop. And so that's what I would do. And then I'd be finished with this image. And I think when you compare it to our before, it of course looks drastically different. And if we compare it to my inspiration, I think we're definitely much more in line. I will finish up this image. I'll share a comparison with you so you can see how well I did against my inspiration image.
Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you have fun trying some of these creative techniques with your spring photos.